Ross Mueller. Um, I'm a part-time faculty member at Vanderbilt University. Um, I live in sunny North Dakota and do uh, consulting. I do some consulting for Siemens Hearing Instruments, and I'm a contributing editor for Audiology Online. Um, had a lot of fun working with books over the years, uh, and this one was no exception. Uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Hi, I'm Ruth Bettler. I'm a professor and chair of the Department of Communication Sciences and Disorders at the University of Iowa. Hi, I'm Todd Ricketts. I'm, the, I'm an associate professor at Vanderbilt University and director of graduate studies in the Department of Hearing and Speech Sciences. The short version is that I was flunking out of civil engineering and they told me that to get my grade point good enough to stay in school, the easiest discipline was speech pathology. And while in speech pathology, I stumbled into an audiology class, and, uh, and that's basically it. Mine is similar to Gus's. Uh, I took a course called Speech Correction because I'm born and raised in the Midwest, and I thought I had a twang. I didn't like my twang. This was at the University of Hawaii a few years ago. And while I was taking the course to get rid of my Midwestern twang, I was introduced to speech pathology. So when I came back to the University of Iowa, I took a speech pathology course and happened into an audiology acoustics class that I found more interesting. And so it was just by pure sheer chance. Never meant to do this. My story is not dissimilar to Ruth's and Gus. Um, I also stumbled into the field. Um, I was really looking for something that was both a profession that could help people uh, and appeal to my technical junkie uh, attitude towards uh, technology and, and uh, really looking for something that, that appealed to both uh, the technical side as well as the human side. Uh, I started out looking at speech pathology, um, realized very quickly that was not for me, um, and fell into this field. All three of us uh, have been involved in uh, teaching and for quite a while and, and to different groups. And one of the things we found that when we pulled out uh, a hearing aid book, uh, oftentimes the, the hearing, the book wasn't, didn't quite go in the order that we wanted it to go. It didn't quite have the material that we always wanted. Uh, and so when you see things that you don't really like the way they are, uh, one way to change it is to try to do it yourself and come up with something that's different. Maybe not better, but we, we hope it's better. So what we tried to do is, is to take uh, the fitting of a hearing aid, starting with the day that the patient walks in the door, and go to the very end of outcome measures with everything in between, including selection of technology, including verification, and lay it out in a, in a manner that would be useful for the, the researcher, but also uh, would be easy to digest by the practicing clinician and students. And so that, that was sort of our, our menu for doing this. Uh, we quickly found out it couldn't fit into one single book. Uh, so we then came up with the idea of doing a series of three different books, which will take the different aspects of hearing aid fitting, combine them all together, and um, in a package. And uh, it's hearing aid fitting A to Z. We really felt uh, in talking about hearing aid textbooks over the years that there were a lot of reference books, but not a really good book that was really a true textbook uh, aimed at students who are really trying to pick up this information, particularly for the first time. One of the things I really like about the book is the various places where we kind of walk through different techniques and, and, and give uh, the reader a chance to kind of walk through various aspects um, kind of in a step-by-step -step manner in some ways. Um, so it's, it's not just information that's presented, um, but it's information that can be consumed. I'll add to that. One of the things that I really like about the book is we three are pretty different people. And I think each of our strengths adds to the other strength. But when we had the opportunity to compare notes and compare attitudes or compare biases, whichever the case may be, we found we really weren't that different. And so this book gave us a chance to get on the soapbox occasionally, where we could give you our bias. You can take it or leave it, but we think it's a pretty good bias occasionally. Well, there are a lot of things um, of, of the book that was um, 
I think if you really say my favorite, I guess one of my favorites was EndNotes because um, I was sort of in charge of those. And we found as we were going through the book, there were some things that were, they didn't really fit in the chapter, but we sort of, we didn't want them lost to history. And we had to have a place to put them. So we have something that I don't think you'll find in uh, most any other textbook, and that's EndNotes, which are little tidbits uh, that add something to the chapter. Um, you may or may not be interested, but they're at the end. You can skip them if you like. Uh, but I guess that was my favorite.